One of the things you need to do when navigating for operational or tactical purposes is being able to communicate your position. We're going to start with assuming this crossroads up here where the pencil circle mark is. You found this position for some other reason. You were pointed at it a map, you come out of the woods and discovered it, um, and you determine this is where you are by anything, road signs, terrain association, pace count, things like that. Now you have to determine where you are such that it can be communicated to other people. Luckily, there's a standardized system to do this that everybody else understands just as well as you will. We're going to mark it with this little blue arrow so that we can keep track of it as we continue talking about this. The basic unit of measure is the grid square. These lines across and off the page make little squares on the map, which are actually represent 1,000 meters or one kilometer wide squares. The numbers in the middle of the map or on the edges or help you determine what the reference is for those squares. Squares are red, or rather the numbers are designated by going across then up. So to find the number across, you need to find the number between those two horizontal points. So the first thing you do, counterintuitively, this causes some people problems, is you're going to go down or up until you find the numbers. In this case, ours is between 0, 07 and 0, 08. We always count up, so you're going to use the low number. So the grid reference for the 1,000 meter grid is 0, 07. Always write things down. Don't try to do this on the fly while you're communicating with people. So write down 0, 07 in your notebook. And you can put an E after it, which stands for Easting. This is what they're always called, Eastings and Northings. Now that you have that, you're going to go across until you find the corresponding numbers Again, taking the low one, you'll see that there, though there are numbers in the middle, there are also numbers on the side. Disregard the uh, small numbers, by the way, on the side. That 5-1 I'm pointing at right now, use the large number, the 8-7, which is, of course, the only number shown on the middle of the map, which is therefore very convenient. Again, or count up, you can almost disregard the 8-8 in this case. The, the reference is to that bottom left corner, it's 8-7. Again, grab your notebook, and you need to write down 87 northing. I am breaking this down into two lines because to make it easier for us to talk about, but you don't actually need to write it down exactly like that each time. You can do it as a big string, like we'll show you later. Now, you can go, you can add extra precision. A thousand meters is a very large area, especially if you are walking. An easy one is to simply pick that if you're referring to a um, single element within that grid square, for example, your intersection is the only visible road intersection, you can simply say we are at the road intersection inside 0787. That's fairly findable. In this open terrain, it would probably even be findable by troops on foot, but certainly by, say, aircraft or anybody looking at the map, and they can do their own plotting to that point. But the other method is to subdivide the grid. This supports one meter accuracy. Now you can do it, anybody can subdivide any unit that is visible, like these lines, in half. So you can always add a 5 to the end of it if you think you're near the middle. Here you could possibly guesstimate and say that maybe you're 9 tenths away across, but you don't have to. There are specialized scales. In this case, one of them you're probably carrying around. Your compass has a scale specifically designed to fit on the military maps you're using. Each of these ticks is 100 meters. There's 10 of them, of course, across there. So now you don't have to guess, you can simply put it across at the point you're talking out. Look, and you are in fact nine tenths across the thing, or nine meters. So simply go and pick up your notebook and write a nine. Note you have to use the same number of digits for each direction. There's no such thing as five digit accuracy, there's only four and six and eight and ten digit accuracy. Therefore, if you've done that, you have to now go up. And it's, it looks like about three. We can round it to three and call it good. And then, of course, write that down. And now we have what's called six-digit accuracy, which is 100 meter accuracy, which is pretty good, unless it's very close country or pitch black. If you can get to 100 meter square, you can get there. Now, as I said, you, anybody can subdivide any visible ticks by half. So in this case, we know that we're running us right on this nine, but we're about between the three and the four. So we can simply throw a five on there, or halfway between three and four. That's perfectly valid accurate measurement. You don't have to worry about the fact that it's actually four. 
Now note, this is how you actually write the grid references. In one big string, you don't go easting or northing. That's how you communicate them if you're on the radio or writing them down for your opera words or any other purposes. Now, there are other things to keep in mind that we'll talk about later. Um, precision accuracy, for example, the way GPS is recorded we're gonna, will, will be discussed entirely separately. And overall, though, if you forget any of this stuff, you don't have to go and bring my video into the field. Simply look at the bottom of your map. They all have a cheat sheet that tells you how to read, say that you read across, then up, how to subdivide the grids, though it doesn't have a convenient scale, you still have to use your compass. How, how to get down to 10 meter accuracy even, and how to refer to the map if you're in larger areas, which again we'll, we'll talk about in an entirely other video.